Hello everyone and welcome to the BNB Motorsports channel. My name is Braylon and today I have the channel's first ever dual vehicle episode. I have a 2009 HHR SS and a 2010 HHR SS for you all. I'm really excited to get started and big shout out to Brent for loaning me both. The HHR's model years span from 2006 to 2011. In 2009, a high-performance version called the HHR SS became available, and the model was actually removed in 2010, making these cars rare. So rare, in fact, that the 2009 is one of 125, and the 2010 is one of less than 40. Over the years, these unique cars have developed a loyal following. Let's check out these engines. This engine is the 2-liter LNF 4-cylinder board 30 over, Factory 52 millimeter turbo pushing 28 pounds of boost, ZZP standard intercooler, and 5 speed manual short throw, no lift shift transmission. This car is one of 320 cars with that transmission, and it has 380 wheel horsepower. The black car has the same bolt ons, clutch, ZZP intercooler, but it is not bored over and is pushing 25 pounds of boost. Obviously, the owner has put in a ton of time-consuming work, so let's talk about what's similar on both of these cars. First, they have the FE5 racing suspension. Second, they have the engine modifications that I had talked about just a second ago. And third, they have the Brembo performance package. Now that we've talked about some similarities, let's get into some differences, starting with this 2010. First, the engine is bored over. Second, it is tuned for 93 octane with methanol mix. And third, it is pushing 28 pounds of boost as opposed to the stock 16. Now let's get into the differences on this car. First, the engine is stock bore. It is tuned for 91 octane, and it is pushing 25 pounds of boost. This car was the current owner's father's car that he took over, and he was a Vietnam vet, so thank you for your service. Each of these cars are limited edition, and you won't see too many HHR SSs driving around on the street like these today. Moving on to the interiors, this is the black HHR's interior, and this is the red HHR's interior. They are almost identical, and the easiest way to differentiate between the two are by the red accents of the red HHR. There is ample back seat space and plenty of room in the back for storage. The dashes, climate controls, and radios are all similar. I'm so glad you could join me inside of the red SS. My top two favorite things about the interior. First, the red, silver, and black theme we have going. I really think that the red and silver elements really enhance the interior's look. And second, I like the versatility of this vehicle. Not only can you cruise back and forth and be comfortable, but you also get the versatility of being able to carry whatever you need and you get speed as well. How many cars can you say have that function? I had to try really hard to find a con with this interior, and the only thing I could come up with is the lack of console space, which I kind of need to store things. Maybe not everybody does, but that could be a consideration if you're thinking about buying an HHR. I have a simple key for you. It is the key fob with the lock, unlock, remote start, and the alarm, and then just the ignition key, as well as your door lock and unlock. All right, let's go for a drive. I feel between the two cars is the red car that I'm in right now the clutch engages further down whereas the clutch engages at the top in the black car other than that they drive pretty similar and I'm really enjoying it so far I've been mindful of is the spoilers that front spoiler is pretty low to the ground especially since this red car is lowered just a bit so I have been trying very hard to not run over any potholes or any inclined drives that was fun let's head back for the final review you've made it to the final review 
I'm really disappointed that GM had to discontinue the Heritage High Roof or HHR. The lifespan was much too short for such a great vehicle. How often do you find a vehicle with the utility of a small pickup truck combined with the agility and performance of a small sports car? You really don't. The followers of the HHR are loyal, and considering how rare and unique this car is and will continue to get, those followers will increase over time, and I am so grateful to be able to review not one, but two of the HHRs for you all, so thank you again to Brent. That's all for this week. Make sure you stay tuned for the next Motorsports Monday, where I will be reviewing a Ford Lightning, and it will be an electrifying episode. I'll see you all next week on the next Motorsports Monday.